As a follow-up to, uh, to the description of our project, I want to talk a little bit about qualitative research and perhaps mention a little bit about uh, community-based participatory research, but that will probably await another component uh, later in the course. What is qualitative research? And the essence of qualitative research is that it's non-numerical. It can be, num there's some elements of numerical, but for the most part it's narrative and text and requires the organization and analysis of that in the context of that narrative and text. There's some things to collect data on that simply are not able to be translated into uh, numerical values. And uh, it's necessary to see where qualitative research can be the most effective approach in collecting key data at specific points in uh, in our research and intervention project. Why do qualitative research? Well, the development of empirically valid and salient research requires discovery. Surveys, quantitative data are not very good at discovery. You can discover interrelationships among variables, but if you haven't identified qualitatively a particular term or an event or a behavior or an attitude that's crucial to your investigation, obviously you can't put it in the survey. So uh, this becomes an, a very important part of uh, the research process. Mixed methods are increasingly identified as a salient approach to uh, and a valid approach by uh, NIH. And I encourage you to look at some of the NIH documents that describe qualitative research. In addition, impact and outcome, though typically measured quantitatively, inclu usually includes in the evaluation process an assessment of fidelity and acceptability and the process of implementing and the individuals reacting to the intervention. And this, we think, is best uh, provided by um, uh, by qualitative research, and uh, we've done a paper that particularly looks at qualitative evaluation that I can send on to uh, uh, Dr. Wu and Dr. Baber. So comparing uh, these research methods, I won't go deeply into each of these, but uh, we're dealing with the quality of the phenomena versus the quantity. It's inductive, it builds theory from the ground up, versus quantitative, which is more deductive. It uses, as I mentioned before, text and narrative versus numerical data. The focus of the study is more localized, whereas the quantitative data can be local or national or international. The unit of analysis is usually larger than the individual, whereas the individual is most represented in quantitative work. It uses selective sampling as opposed to the randomized sampling process of quantitative work. It emphasizes validity, whereas quantitative emphasizes reliability and generalizability. It's an important step in the discovery process as opposed to measuring distribution, frequency, and maybe even hypothesis testing. And it uses the case study continuous assessment design as opposed to the experimental or quasi-experimental design. So the one way of looking at the research process is that you start out with a theory drawn in part from your own experience, uh, your own research and your past, and past research that others have done. You develop a conceptual model. And now it's time to go out and do formative research, which should be in the form of mixed methods, using a whole variety of data collecting techniques that I would, uh, I'll describe in a bit, in combination with quantitative surveys. That, uh, those results should generate a modified model, different from your initial conceptual model, and affect the nature of your intervention design you implement that design and already as a, a function of process evaluation, another part of the uh, particular contribution of qualitative research, you revise your theoretical model, revise your intervention, and move on to intervention implementation, process and outcome research,
and finally a revised model. And for many of us who do multi-year research, we're constantly replicating this particular model. The two areas of formative research and process evaluation become central pieces of the contribution of qualitative research. There are many methods of uh, data collection. Archival materials can include medical records, court records, educational records that are mostly uh, in narrative form. There might be some quantitative data as well. Uh, I earlier mentioned that we used uh, key informant interviewing. Oh, by the way, uh, in archival materials, there was also, we started out in our project with uh, a data set of 33,000 individuals, uh, PLHIV, on ART in 13 centers and used that analysis as one of our sources. So that also is archival material. Uh, we uh, did extensive key informant interviewing. Uh, we did social and geographic mapping of where the uh, PLHIVs were coming from, uh, from the various parts of Mumbai. We did social network analysis, assessing the degree to which individuals had larger or smaller or more peer-oriented or more family-oriented social networks. We did uh, observation of the nature of the uh, ART services and um, match those with guidelines that are provided by the national level. Unstructured and semi-structured interviews. Unstructured interviews leave the respondent open to um, make statements that we build on with their own language. Semi-structured interviews require quantitative survey instruments but allow open-ended uh, response systems. I won't go into too much detail about consensus modeling and of course many of you know focus groups which are an overused technique but we particularly like to use it at the end of a project to help present the data and to help individuals that are part of the study population to help in, a, in the analysis and the policy implications. We'll get PowerPoint and can look at these. Just to note that um, jottings and uh, as individuals are speaking are uh, observations that you're making in complex events form the basis. You can't always videotape if there's a meeting, uh, if there's a particular event occurring. That has to be described and what we usually uh, suggest is that they take short, that in the research investigators take shorthand notes and move quickly to transcribe those into full sentences and paragraphs. Uh, we've also used audio tape and videotape uh, as a means of recording. Uh, this can be cumbersome sometimes in the field and a bit intimidating depending on the population. And uh, we've generally used Atlas TI, a computer-based text search program for analysis of our data um, that involves essentially providing chunks of narrative that are coded and then can be pulled up um, uh, across the general sample. Uh, to illustrate, for example, uh, the negotiation of sexuality uh, for individuals who are HIV positive uh, within marriage. Uh, a number of uh, criteria has been set forth. I won't go into too much detail here, but um, internal and external validity, uh, reliability, and confirmability uh, has been uh, essential to the qualitative data process. Um, the fact that you need to be along or uh, around for a while, that uh, there needs to be observation of the same scenes to see variation, that there can be important triangulation between what you've learned qualitatively and what you're seeing as a result of quantitative analysis. Um, you can debrief among other professionals. Member checks relate to describing the data that people in the study community and having them respond. Thick description means you want to provide substantial one-line responses are not good. 
uh, in qualitative analysis, the thicker the description of what's, uh, how people feel or behave is much more effective. An order trail for where you're getting this information, ensuring that not only is there a primary but a secondary and tertiary kinds of behaviors and attitudes, so a negative case analysis, a reflexive journal in which you're responding to the things you're learning as an individual, um, and uh, that may be good enough for that list. Free listing and consensus modeling is something I'll, I'll skip, uh, just to say that this provides uh, an opportunity for building uh, conceptual models, culturally based conceptual models, and uh, can ask, pe in which people are asked to generate free lists of elements that might include um, the issues they face, for example, uh, as uh, and having been having uh, and being HIV positive, and then um, using those lists to generate uh, conceptual models of how one element relates to another. Uh, finally, we've described uh, the survey as ethnographically informed consisting of both closed-ended items that are based on our qualitative data and relate particularly uh, to the study population as well as externally derived and validated scales. And finally, uh, for the storage of and analysis of qualitative data, I mentioned Atlas TI. Consensus Modeling has a program called Anthropac. And of course, qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis that can be STATA or SPSS or um, uh, various other kinds of programs. To summarize then, uh, these kinds of data were very much a part of our first year of establishing this project. And uh, in the effort finally to design highly salient um, interventions, as well as to ensure that our survey instrument at the baseline would be solid enough to be um, to monitor the evolution of individuals, their behaviors and attitudes across the three cycles of intervention. Uh, it became crucial that we came to understand uh, the um, the particular dynamics, the terms, the language, the events, the that were crucial in understanding the lives of people with HIV. Uh, I might also mention that in preparation for describing community-based participatory research that uh, there were many people who were engaged as part of uh, the interventions, as part of uh, the approval and support of the project, and um, the uh, individuals in the Positive People's Network were very much involved in intervention design and facilitation. And the individuals that were part of the community intervention uh, also played a significant role in uh, project design and in selecting topics.